Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about the Unity game engine, and we are talking about it because Unity 2020.2 was just released. That's right, we're coming to the end of 2020, thank goodness, and they've only done two releases this year, and in my humble opinion, that is a very good thing. They're focusing on quality over quantity, which is the exact opposite of what they've been doing for years, and it's kind of given us a bit of a mess. So what you're seeing in front of you right now, this is the HDRP new template. So when you start up a new project, remember you used to get the paint scene? Now you get this, and this showcases a bit more of a, an update of what the render pipeline is capable of, HDRP standing for High Def Render Pipeline. So you've got three different scenarios going on here. You've got kind of a, an outdoor lighting scene, as you can see by this guy right here. Uh, so this material is being lit by the outdoor and the sun only. And you can see the effects up over here. Obviously, this is showcasing the higher quality graphics that we've got going on in this particular case. And this is set up as three different rooms. Next up, we have this room right here. Um, this is kind of showing outdoor lighting mixing with indoor lighting. Uh, you see some of the VFX in action. So we've got dust particles and we've got some, if we really look close down here, uh, we've got some butterflies flying around inside there. We've got all of these, um, these dust pieces, particles flying around. They really got to clean this place apparently because there's a lot of dust going on. And you can see how it is interacting let me just go back to the butterfly. You can see how it's interacting with the scene, the VFX that are available there. So you get a bit better of an example of what HDRP is all about. And then finally, we have an entirely indoor lit scene here going on right there. And once again, as you can tell by the amount of dust going on, this place really needs to get cleaned. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of dust floating around in this area. So you can see, uh, Definitely a, a more interesting starting template and a more useful starting template than what we've ever had before. Now, an interesting thing about the 2020.2 release is also this new feature. Now, you got to enable it the first time. So go to help and then turn on quick search. Once it's it's going to go, okay, I haven't found it yet. Would you like to install this? Go ahead and say yes. And then it's going to ask you what size of font you want. Pick. I went with the medium font, by the way. So if you're curious, that's what this looks like. And then all you do is hit alt and then apostrophe, and you get this guy. And this is an instant search. So see here at concrete cyan, for example. I can go concrete, and you're going to get all of that stuff. This has been desperately needed. Let's say if we want to search for all the CS files. There we go, all the CS files are there. If we want to do just the CS files, like do the dot in there. Um, and you can see you've got uh, filtering options right here. So I can do alt and then left. We've got filtering, so we can limit down to what we want to have out there. Uh, alt enter, we got secondary actions. Uh, I guess I gotta search for something first. ASD, alt enter. Oh, did not expect that. All right, so let's do alt apostrophe to get back in here. Uh, then we've got uh, enter is the default action. Alt right is the action menu. I don't see that it does much. Down here, you can see various different options available right there. So this is the new quick search feature. Uh, and then finally, you can do question mark to find specifics of what you're looking for. And you can also quick search into the documentation, which is actually quite nice too. Uh, so um, it, it's, oops, didn't actually mean to load that. Uh, this is uh, a definite improvement. I, I do like the quick search for sure. It's one of those things that's going to be just kind of generally useful. It's the kind of thing that you would normally have to install an add-on to do. So I definitely like that new feature and I like this new template. All right, so that's about that. Let's go take a look at what is new in this particular release. All right, so here we are. This is the blog post about it. Uh, there's a lot of duplication going on here. I've got three sets of release notes that we can go through. I'm, I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to break it down by category. I'll, I'll go that approach. But you can see here, uh, they're talking once again, uh, their priorities here. They've got a blog post about that. They're going to look at performance and quality of life for all users. I think those are really areas they need to look at. Stop adding new features that we can never use. Uh, so it's packed with all the latest features for those projects in pre-production or simply for those who want to leverage the most cutting edge. Version of Unity also um, ensures a smooth upgrade path for tomorrow. Again, and if you're starting a long-term project today, they do expect you to go with the LTS versions. It's just a thing here, but we prioritize quality over quantity and reduce, reduce the number of releases to two per year, giving our engineers an extended stabilization phase. And I, I actually, as a tech reporter, I like having more releases because it gives me more videos to do. But as a user, I would rather have, you know, releases that actually work. So I'm going to break this down by category because that's what they've done. So we've got a lot of improvements. We're going to look at the graphical improvements first off, and they broke it down by category, subcategories within there. So we got the ERP, uh, which is the universal render pipeline. This used to be the standard pipeline. Basically, uh, this is for uh, mobile devices, lower end devices, that kind of thing. It's now in version 10, uh, now has uh, built in render. Uh 
closer to built-in uh, render pipelines, so that's the old version that it replaced. Uh, screen, screen space ambient occlusion, or SSAO, uh, has been added. It approximates, approximates brightness or darkness of specific surfaces based on its surrounding surface and how exposed it is to ambient lighting. Uh, also, ERP lit shader, you can now have additional surface inputs such as detail, detail normal, height, and parallax maps. Uh, then we got the uh, HDRP or the H, you know, HDRP, I guess it's the high def render pipeline, uh, includes better tools to help you debug lighting. Um, we also, a new uh, decal layer features allows you to specify which decals affect which materials on a layer by layer basis. Path tracing supports fog absorption and subsurface scattering when you uh, make organic materials like skin look smooth rather than rough and plastic like. Uh, also includes a new depth of field mode for producing path traced images with high quality defocus blur and more. Uh, HDRP template, we just saw that in action there. Uh, and then ray tracing, uh, improvements to ray tracing HDRP include a set of fall backs for transparent game objects so the visuals are coherent with and without uh, recursive rendering and refraction. With this release, HDRP supports colored ray trace shadows for transparent and transmissive game objects. Additionally, Denoiser for ray trace shadows now produces higher quality results. Uh, HDRP's ray trace reflection solution now supports transparent materials, useful for transparent surfaces such as windows or water. Quality and performance of ray trace global illumination has also been improved. So that is it on the graphical side of things. Um, then we've got just the platforms, uh, like platforms, literally targeted platform updates. AR Foundation 4.0 is now verified, kind of basically means you're ready to go. AR being the comprehensive term for, um, oh no, aug sorry, AR being augmented reality. Uh, also, LIDAR, LiDAR uh, sensors on the iPhone 12 and iPad Pro uh, generate even more accurate results now. Samsung Adaptive Performance 2.0 is here. This is actually only um, supported on Samsung devices. Uh, then we've got uh, native Apple Silicon, so the new M1 chip is now supported in the uh, standalone player. And that's about it for new platform functions. So we've got new programmer tools here. The, the nice things here are C Sharp 8 support has been added. Uh, root namespace available in the assembly definition settings. Faster build compilation. Consistent time.delta time. This is one of those things they just worked on. And I can't believe that at this stage of the game, uh, you know, the elapsed time is still being updated. But eh. Uh, consistent, okay, so performance improvements, cross-board editor coroutines, and faster workflows with configurable enter play mode. Uh, this was actually added uh, last version or the version before, but uh, makes it so you can actually, your enter play can be even faster if you wish. Uh, manage code stripping with Unity Linker, profiler updates, Roslyn uh, analyzer improvements, and Unity safe mode. Now, this is actually one of the most interesting ones because... As we all know, especially if you're using marketplace assets, things are going to break quite often. And when a script breaks, it could cause like a, a cascading script breaking event. And Unity Safe Mode allows you to um, uh, control how the project starts up, uh, helps you figure out which errors, uh, where the errors are coming from and resolve them and so on. So that is a nice new feature there. Uh, in terms of the editor itself, we've got Unity Hub was upgraded 2.4.1 and we got that new template in. You can see you've also got the option of downloading new templates right there. Uh, I've got search across your scenes using quick search. We saw that in action. That's alt plus apostrophe. But do keep in mind, you're going to have to install it once first. I had to install it first via uh, help uh, quick search before I could use the alt apostrophe personally. Optimizations to prefabs, prefab import improvements, uh, import improvements, asset import pipeline optimizations. Physics got some improvements. Quality of life general improvements. Scoped registries for control of custom packages. And the Unity distribution portal was updated. Unity distribution portal allows you to target a lot of like alternative stores all from a single place. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of that one right there. Now, the nice thing is one of the things that's kind of going behind the scenes is they've got a new uh, process pipeline behind the scenes for handling file loading and importing and such. And these are kind of the benefits there. So hopefully, you know, bringing new assets in or making changes to them uh, should just be better performant in the future. And improvements for artists and uh, cinematic tools. So both shader graph and the VFX graphs got improvements. Animation rigging is now ready to use. Progressive light mappers, video improvements, 2D streamlined menus, 2D animation 5.0 with 2D uh, inverse kinematics and improved 2D default assets. So these probably require a little bit more explanation. Shader graph um, is the new way of visually creating shaders like so. Um, new features that improve workflow for technical artists. Graph editor performance was improved. End point of the graph is now a modular collection of feature blocks rather than a monolithic master node. Allows you to easily switch a graph between shader models such as lit or hair. Graph inspector consolidates the settings from master node and other nodes on the graph into a single location. Also controls the active 
target and shading model for the graph. The graph is now visually indicates which features and nodes are compatible with the current setting selections. Uh, note that Unity 2020.2, your existing graph will upgrade to use master stacks. Uh, VFX graph, uh, as a way of creating uh, particle effects and so on, uh, includes addition of output events. It's actually kind of cool, allows you to call out delegate to C-sharp codes. Uh, Multi-mesh feature allows you to use the same mesh output for up to four meshes, making it easier to add per particle variety to your effects. Per particle LOD or level of detail, you can optimize your effects by setting LOD meshes based on the screen size in the mesh output. Frustrum calling is now available as an optimization to discard the rendering of off-screen particles. Experimental features are hidden behind the experimental operator's blocks checkbox in preferences visual effects. Uh, we got some improvements on the light mapper for global illumination. Both GPU and CPU light mappers now have a higher bounce limit. In addition, uh, they now use blue noise sampling for improved uh, light map quality. GPU light mapper now uses less memory. Uh, when memory unload, progressive updates are disabled, and the light mapper can automatically throttle memory usage internally. This means that you can make larger projects with the GPU light mapper. Um, yeah, so that is it. So if you want a bit of a rundown, this is available here as well. This is kind of the, the hub of all of the things that we just went through and a bit of a timeline of, of how things are going. So right now we've got the 2020.2 release. Uh, we've got the 2018 LTS version of the beginning of next year is going to be dying. As I mentioned earlier on, 2019 LTS is, if you're going to be creating a project for production, probably the version you should be considering. It is going to be supported until the beginning of 2020.2. In the beginning of 2020, Point one, we will see a version of what we just saw become the LTS version. So what you're seeing in 2020.2, there's going to be a long-term support version of it coming early next year, at which point they will kick off the 2020.1 release, and then that cycle continues. And again, we're only going to see two major tech releases next year as well which again, I think is a good move. I don't, I don't know what your opinion on the subject is, but I think every release that Unity has done as of late has been more and more riddled with new and experimental that nobody could ever use because there's so many pieces that depend on other pieces that aren't production yet uh, or they're just not stable enough to use. So I like this support on stability and features support and uh, everything that they're doing here. I think Unity are doing the right thing with this. And then finally, there is one more version of this available. Uh, I'll link to all of these in the article down below. So whichever one you want to check out is available. A bit of a summary of what all is here. Um, there was a bit of a reorder of the uh, 2D uh, menuing and such. Let's see over here. So I think that would be under uh, game objects. 2D. Where did you go, 2D? <laughs> reordered it by getting rid of it completely. Uh, anyways, I'll find that later on. Uh, so you get a bit of a rundown of what all is here. Uh, so yeah, some definitely some nice improvements there. But most of this stuff is all iterative. And that is what I like to see. This this is kind of where it should be at this point in time. Uh, you know, a little bit of graphic improvements here, a little bit of platform improvements there, but let's just make the stuff that we've added actually work without adding a bunch of new crap. So anyways, that is Unity 2020.2. Uh, let me know what you think of this release, of their strategy towards, you know, quality over quantity. Would you like to see more releases throughout the year or would you like to see more useful releases just less often? Of course, obviously, the option is more releases that are more useful, but hey, come on, it doesn't work that way. So let me know what you think of this release of Unity 2020 in general, of the direction of Unity overall, in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.